Hello, brothers and sisters. This is the Remnant Warrior, and you are now listening to Buy Their Fruits on the Kingdom Productions Network. By their fruits, you shall know them. By, 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 by their fruits. their fruits you shall know them all right welcome to another episode of buy their fruits this is episode 43 right john i believe so yes don't ever ask me about numerical numbers i'll forget (laughs) i can't believe we've had 43 shows to be honest man i never thought we'd make it this far praise god all glory to god brother amen to that yeah today we got a special guest his name is john clash i'm gonna let him introduce himself and uh Give a little background. He's, he's now a, uh, a successful author, which is pretty awesome. And the topic we're going to be talking about tonight is extremely important. Um, so uh, I hope you guys tune in to the end. And don't forget to hit that like button, the follow button, and rate us, please, so that we can get past, past the algorithms here. But uh, yeah, let's get it going. How you doing, John? I'm good, man. And yes, beating the algorithms is so important. So important. <laughs> it's tough <laughs> yeah tell me about it it's uh i i can i can never figure it out you know there's all these strategies and everything uh, i got the youtube page and stuff and sometimes i get a video that's like takes me five seconds to make and it just explodes and then one i'll put hours of research and stuff into and it like gets 100 views and i, I just want to go cry in a corner I understand that as, as a broadcaster, as an Christian apologist on YouTube, I I completely understand that. It's hard on Facebook too, man, because like, I've noticed that like, you know, I'll, I'll make a regular status or something or post a meme and it gets a hundred likes. Right. But you post a podcast episode and hardly anybody even sees it at all. That's, that's part of their system though. That's no uh, doubt. Yeah. They, they want to, they want you to pay to play. Yep. I won't pay for bots. I'll pay for bots to make it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It makes <laughs> it look like a thousand people watch my thing. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, John, do you want to give a little background about yourself, who you are, how you came to Christ, and then you know, just let everybody know real quick where they can find you? Yes. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm gonna try to condense this really, really, really short. I think we've we've went through this before one time uh, when we when we were discussing Santeria, right? Uh, right, Jeremy. We were. Oh yeah, yeah, right on the yeah, yeah. Uh, sleep paralysis episode. Yeah, yeah, that that was um that was it. So I'll try to condense it, and uh, I'll try to speak over my neighbor's dogs, as well. Um, so I did not grow up in the church. We did the cultural Catholic thing, right? Um, so my father, who is still an atheist today, you know, he made us go to church to um I guess appease my grandmother, at the time, and we never spoke about God in the house. We just kind of went through the motions. You guys know what cultural Catholicism is, you know, where it's just, you just do it because it's a part of the culture. If you're and and Protestants are trying to bring that back. Now, cultural Christianity, they're trying to bring that back. The Calvinists are and the post-millennialists are now trying to bring that to Christendom back as well. So it's no longer strict to the Catholics. The Protestants are trying to bring in their own formation here in the United States of America. No, right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, not so much in tune with, uh, with that, but I'm just, you know, my experience was from when I was a kid, uh, in that situation. And so, you know, like anybody who just did cultural Catholic, like you could trick yourself into thinking you're Catholic. I did not trick myself into thinking I was Catholic. I knew that I wasn't because we didn't speak about God at all, uh, in the home. So, um, fast forward, uh, my parents got divorced. I moved to Yonkers, New York with my father, uh, my two brothers got, uh, my my father got remarried to my stepmother. And so now I got a, a sister well, at the time, a, a little sis, little baby sister, but she's fully grown now, graduated law school and stuff. Crazy. Um, <laughs> but there was no God talk in that house either. So it wasn't until, um, you know, I was in my late twenties to where I ended up uh, getting around people who actually believed in God. But at that time, I was already involved in Santeria. 
uh, and in Santeria, not to go too down into that story, but I was using it as like a good luck charm. You know, uh, I thought that these people could help me be a rich, famous rapper. So I kind of just did what they were saying. I saw a lot of bugged out spiritual stuff, but I was still agnostic towards, you know, is there a God and everything? I was literally just using it as, as a, a means to an end. Right. Uh, and then I got involved in business and I got around people who were into personal development and, uh, I, I'm still a proponent of personal development to an extent, but, uh, you know, personal growth and self-help, but you can only help yourself so much. You need, you know, the only one who can take you all the way is God. Um, and it's all self-help is like superficial uh, when you really break it all down, but yeah. that's a conversation for another time. Um, so in that world, I kind of got introduced to the law of attraction and uh, I was participating in new age spirituality without realizing I was participating in it because I was, I was told the law of attraction was science. Right. And so since it was science, it could go with any worldview and I didn't have a worldview. So I just adopted it because I thought, again, it was a means to an end. I, I thought that I could uh, manifest my reality. And then, you know, it, it still got me into like, doing the crystals stuff and I wasn't heavy into the crystals and whatnot, but, um, you know, meditating and, and trying to be on the right frequency to attract everything that you, that, that I wanted. Um, and then I eventually became a Christian, uh, through apologetics. So, you know, shout out to you, John, for doing apologetics. Um, you know, that, uh, so important we could do a whole podcast on the importance of, of apologetics, but was there anybody that mm -hmm. stuck out to you during that time that you listened to that? So um... I listened to a lot of debates between, so this is what happened just to, real quick. I ended up getting invited to a church because they, my friends said it was like a rock concert. You got to go. Mm -hmm. It's like a rock concert. And, and I never been to any church besides uh, a Catholic church. I think one time I went to another church for, for, uh, um, somebody who died, but, uh, and then we went to a church service, but besides that, I'd never been to any church that wasn't Catholic. So when I went to this church, it was like a rock concert, you know, it, it was insane, never been to anything like it. And so that piqued my interest, uh, that along with a few, a few other things piqued my interest. So I, I started attending, I wasn't a believer, but I, I started attending. Then I got invited to another church. Uh, under a similar pretense, they said, John, it'll be like a regional. And the the regional was uh, these like motivational sales trainings that we used to go to, and they're really enjoyable. So I'm like, all right, cool, I'll go check it out. So anyway, uh, at the end of that service, I'm down at the front, giving my life to Christ. And I don't even know how it happened. But I was there, I took the little pamphlet, I went home to my mother's house. And I, I was like, you know what, I did not become a Christian. That's not what happened. I was in my feelings. Like there was an emotional service and the emotion drove me to just raise my hand and quote unquote, give my life to Christ. But I didn't even know what Christians believed. I didn't even know what I believed. I was, you know, agnostic, even borderlining atheism at some points and being very hostile towards Christianity. And I'm like, this was a, a moment of revelation for me where I'm like, I, I don't even know what these people believe. I don't know what I believe. I don't know what Hinduism believes. I don't know what, like anything. I didn't know anything. So I went down the rabbit hole of truth, just trying to figure out what do all these people believe? Because if I'm going to subscribe to something, I got to make sure that it's true. So that led me to watching debates from like William Lane Craig versus everybody. It's like yeah. Craig, Craig versus the world, you know? Uh, and I went into watching those debates thinking that William Lane Craig was going to lose. I didn't even know who William Lane Craig was. I just saw atheist versus Christian debate and I, I watched them. And I was like, dude, he is mopping the floor with these people, you know? And it wasn't only him. It was like John Lennox at the time, Ravi Zacharias, you know, we all know that uh, he was living a double life, but that doesn't change how good he was as apologetics and, and, you know, fighting for the Christian faith. He, he laid out some arguments that I still use today. And, and I, I still hold uh, like in my arsenal of answering questions and objections. But um, then it was, it was just doing also research on how was the new Testament created? You know, I always thought, oh, the Bible's written by man, blah, blah, blah. You know, all those cliches that people say, I, I 
repeated those. And so I, I just started really digging into, is this stuff true? Came to believe that Jesus is who he says he is. And I'm like, all right, what do I do with this now? Um, it just seems like the most probable answer to all of this information that I have. And then eventually put my life, uh, I, I eventually put my trust in Christ. And then I went on with my life, just no change at all. Uh, the, the only change I would say, um, as far as like not sinning and stuff like that was I didn't, I started to feel a little bit bad about when I participated in sin. And, but that was something I was easily able to suppress for a pretty long time until, uh, a few years into my Christian walk, the rug got swept out from under me. And I kind of just stumbled into a really good church. This was my first time being in a church where the, um, the people at the church actually lived Christian lives outside of church. And it wasn't until I was plugged into to that, that I, uh, that I really started walking with Christ in, in, in the way that I guess it's portrayed now, like since I'm public about my walk with Christ, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, since I'm out there with, with everything, uh, you know, I've been, I've become so passionate about Jesus and spreading the good news and helping people grow in faith that I'm fighting algorithms like you guys now. So I don't even know if I answered your question, but <laughs> Oh, yeah, you did great, man. That's awesome. I mean, uh, I, I think we talked about it last time as well. Like, there's parts of your testimony where I really relate to because, you know, when I was about 12 or 13, I went down, I went down that whole uh, seeking for truth rabbit hole. I just wanted to believe whatever was true. So I, like you, I studied other religions. And, you know, I, I just went deep into it. And I didn't even get saved until I was like 19. But, you know, it's there are parts of your testimony that, that I really relate to. And that's one of the things where you're like, you come to the conclusion. Okay. So this is real. I mean, for me, it was like, okay, so the elite really do worship Satan. If they worship <laughs> Satan, you know, that, that means that Jesus Christ has to be real too. I got to pick a side type of thing, you know, <laughs> that's a, that's a good point. You know, I, I started, uh, that was one of, one of the many deciding factors for me when I realized how much the world hated Jesus. Right. You know, right. they, they don't hate him. They, they don't hate Muhammad, even though that dude was wild, right? He's he's against everything the the narrative is for right now. Yep. And not only against it, but like throw you off the roof against it. Um <laughs> and and nobody like hates that dude. Nobody hates Buddha. I mean, I don't think Buddha was like a evil person, but you know, it's just that there, there's there was one of the things that is so stupid, but it made sense. Like, you know how people say Jesus Christ as a curse, right? Yep. Like they stub their toe. They're like, Jesus Christ. I looked at that. I'm like, why wouldn't they, why do they use his name as a curse and nobody else's? Like, why is that a right. curse name, curse yeah. word? Yeah. And so that, that for me, these little things, and I know that's like subjective stuff uh, that I'm, I'm playing with in my mind. Uh, at the time of me coming to Christ, but that that was one of the major things. And then also, like the world hates Jesus, like the, people hate him so much. And I I went to this uh, philosophy meeting one time, and I met these people who were humanists, right? And they didn't know I was a Christian. They, we we were just discussing philosophy, and um, they invited me to their meeting, and they're like, yeah, it's it's kind of like Christianity, but without the Jesus guy. And, you know, I didn't say anything because I'm just like, like, what are you talking about? Like, it didn't, it didn't, uh, didn't register in my mind. But yeah. when I was on the drive home, I'm like, all right, you don't want to believe in God. You don't want to, but like, what's your problem with Jesus? Strictly exactly. as, a his, as a historical figure, like as a philosopher, let's just say, what's your issue with the dude? He's, He's pretty legit and pretty on point. He, he, if you just uh, like, even if you don't believe in him as the son of God, just from a historical figure standpoint, he is pretty on point with everything. What's your problem with him? Right. He was a good guy. There's like morally, he was like outstanding, obviously. Yeah. Like, even if you weren't a Christian, you know, you can look at what the Bible says about him and he's morally outstanding. And the things that he commanded are 
all out of love. Everything's based on love, basically, you know? Yep. So I, but like you, I have had that thought too, where it's like people use the name of the Lord in vain as a curse word, but you've never heard somebody stub their toe and say, ah, Buddha, you know, like, <laughs> ah, Zoroaster. Like it just doesn't, it just it doesn't happen, but you can look at the Bible and you can look at the world and you can see that literally everything that it, that evolves around the world man like cultural wise is all against god everything that they're doing is against the bible and yeah. the bible specifically you know so that was one of the things too but you know how, how did you uh come into to i'm assuming it was probably partially santeria but how did you get into the the law of attraction and, and really uh diving deep into that you know it's interesting right i was thinking about this the other day is the same group of people who got me into Santeria were the same group of people who got me into gangs and was the same group of people who got me into drugs and was the same group of people who got me into the law of attraction. You know, it's, uh, it's very interesting. I thought I had great friends. Um, but it, so I was introduced by, to the law of attraction, just, uh, somebody was like, Hey man, I got this, I got the answer to all of our problems ha, has like a Yonkers term for like, bro, right? Yo, ha, you, you got to check this out. Ha, I'm, I'm going to be at Lance's crib at this time. Come to his crib. So I'm like, uh, all right, I'm going to go to his house, right? Crib means house for those of you listening who don't know what <laughs> crib means. So uh, I, I go to his house. He pops in this DVD and it's the secret. You know, uh, this Australian lady's talking about all the mysteries of the of the ancient civilizations and stuff. And there's a horrible Australian accent. My pastor would be so mad. Um, <laughs> that was pretty good, better than I could do. Thanks, thanks. Not uh, that bad. I don't think I could do any better. So, <laughs> <it's> pretty... <laughs> but anyway, so I, I watched this thing and I'm like, wow, that's crazy. And I was sold on it. But then the next day, I completely forgot all about it. It wasn't until. Um, I was involved in business and my business was going horrible. So I'm reaching out to people who are more successful than me. And they're like, you got to read the secret. And I was like, at that time, I was like, oh, wow. How did I forget about the secret? It tells you that you could have everything you want. So that's that's kind of when it it reignited for me. And I started really, really going into trying to trying to hack the universe and, and get everything to work. It's so interesting because it bled into my Christianity because I, I became a Christian and I kept the law of attraction stuff because I thought it was science. You know, that's what the new age does. They paint their worldview under, under science. That's and so um, true. very true. Yep. I'll talk about that in a minute when you get done, but yes. Yeah. So yeah. True. We'll, we'll hop into that. It's, it's so bad. Um, but so I like kept it with me. And I remember having a conversation with one of my friends about how I thought that Jesus was able to manipulate the, the universe simply because he knew how to do it. He knew that everything was energy and could be manipulated and he had control over it. And, you know, maybe he did to an extent, but like just the fact that I was merging these new age ideas with Christianity as well. Um, and I can't even... I think what made me really want to, to dive down the rabbit hole of um, discovering the truth about the law of attraction was the fact that it wasn't working, right? I, I think that, you know, I, I essentially can't pinpoint when I decide to go search the origins of the law of attraction, uh, but I'm pretty sure that it came from a point of me being frustrated that it's not working. And when I'm asking people, Hey, what's going on that it's, I'm the problem, right? right? Like it's something that I'm not doing right. I have a blockage. I have a, you know, I'm, I'm not on the right frequency or, or low vibrations, bro. Yeah. I'm at a low <laughs> vibration. You're eating the wrong foods and, and all this crazy stuff. And it, I'm just like, nah, it can't be all that. It can't be all that. So uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of what, um, how I picked it up and how I continued it was under the disguise of science. And then uh, when I started really digging into it and I realized how deep the rabbit hole went, I was like, oh, nah, this stuff is not only nonsense, but it's satanic. Yeah, like it is, right. is truly Luciferian at its core. Real quick. Um, and I know uh, John, I know you want to hop into, I just want to, can you break down what, uh, by like, I don't know, give a general like definition of what the law of attraction is for those who don't know. Yeah. I'll, I'll read it directly because I never like to, um, 
I never like to caricature something. You know what I mean? I like to give people an opportunity to define for themselves what the law of attraction actually is. So I have it in my book where it's directly from the secret.tv, right? So you, if you scour the internet, you'll find all this, all these nonsense, like uh, pseudoscientific, um, like it's, it's a law of the universe that like attracts like, and your thoughts admit frequencies and those frequencies attract the same frequencies that are in the universe. Like it's just, they don't give you a concrete definition of it. So uh, this is what the secret.com, the secret.tv says, under the law of attraction, the complete order of the universe is determined including everything that comes into your life and everything that you experience. It does so through the magnetic power of your thoughts. Through the law of attraction, like attract like. Like attracts like. What you think about, you bring about. How is this so? Under laboratory conditions, cutting-edge science has confirmed that every thought is made up of energy, and it has its own unique frequency. And when this energy and frequency of a single thought radiates out into the universe, it, it, it naturally interacts with the material world. Of course, it has been long known that matter or physical objects are also just packets of energy at the sub-microscopic quantum level. And so... As your thoughts radiates out, it attracts the energy and frequencies of like thoughts, like objects, and even like people, and draws those things back to you. It follows then that your thoughts become things. So it is saying that your thoughts, like if you have a picture of something in your mind, that is an inanimate object in your mind. It's abstract in your mind, but in reality, it exists somewhere. Mm -hmm. And when you think about that thought and hold that picture in your mind, you are manifesting and bringing that actual physical object towards you, right? Mm -hmm. So my fan right here, if I'm looking over here, the I can't see the fan, but I can think about it, right? So I can be picturing that fan and then that fan is now being attracted into my life. And then I look over here. Wow, there it is. Law of attraction. You know, that's that's it in a uh, in a nutshell. And and they say that this that this works, even if you are aware of it or not, this is always working 100 percent of the time. Wow, it's so it's so vague in a, in a sense. It's like a giant word salad, like none of it's yes. really has a definitive answer or proof or anything. It's just, it, it they, they make it sound good. Yeah. That's about it. They make it sound like a logical, practical thing. Yeah. I don't really like salad. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not without ranch, buddy. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, as a former new ager used to believe in the law of attraction. Um, uh, you know, it happened, you know, it's, it's very easy to self delude yourself uh, cause it sounds scientific, even though, upon now of not being under a sign of like a, a cloud of delusion, or I do believe that I was probably possessed by a spirit of divination uh, myself as well as a new ager, uh, which would also feed into kind of like, have they discussed, you know, the yogis discuss like a Kundalini psychosis or kind of, yeah. like, uh, you know, kind of building upon through, um, and I know Kundalini psychosis probably is, is, is a more example of a more stronger type delusion, but um, kind of b building into what they call self-fulfilling prophecies and and kind of, you know, well, I'm doing this and it seems to be working, uh, therefore, you know, it's accurate. Um, but the thing is, is I could never really, tr like I had an attention journal where I was writing down things that I was trying to manifest into my life. Me right? too. And it just wouldn't work. It just thought I wouldn't work. And I was like, okay, okay well, I see it working for other people. Why isn't it working for me? And I remember the time that I tried to astral project, and I think it was God. I I I, I had a, a, a something push me back into my body and said no, and I was not able to ever do it again. Um, and I still don't know what that's about. Um, but you know, these certain you know, I was trying to practice white magic, thinking I was a white magician, right? And it it never it never worked. Um, now for some people, it does. Um, and I do believe that um, 
you know, there's a certain amount of self-will uh, that a person can, um, that I guess even you could even argue, you would argue that God allows uh, things to happen in a person's life um, that they may want, especially it's different than a believer where God chastised those who, who, who he loves, right? Those who have the spirit of adoption and, and people who may be lost to their own delusion, uh, may have hardened their heart against God, you know, may be actively rebelling against him. You know, that's why you could, you know, the old adage, you know, why does it seem like good things happen to bad people? Right. And so it's, you know, God allows these things to happen. Uh, you know, it rains on the just and the unjust, as Jesus says, right? So ultimately, there is a law of attraction. It doesn't happen 100% of the time. And no matter what, um, God is ultimately, you know, in command. He's ultimately in charge, right? Like man's will can never supersede uh, God's will for, you know, ultimately. And just like when Samuel denounced Saul, and said, you know, which you can kind of equate all these things together, is rebellion is this as is as in the sin of witchcraft, and arrogancy is like the weakness of a weak uh, the wickedness of adultery. Okay, so both of those, especially rebellion, rebellion is you saying, okay, God, I don't want to listen to you, I'm going to do it my way. Well, that's the same as witchcraft. That's the same as the law of attraction. Is you going, I can make through manipulating the universe, which you kind of get into the little God doctrine at that point in Kenneth Copeland, yep. right? That you have the power of co-creating, you have the power with God to be able to manifest things, right? Which is complete heresy, okay? And nonsense. But it kind of stems from, okay, I can be equal to God. And so I can control my destiny. So who cares about God's will? I'm rebelling. It's about what I want, not what God thinks that I need, but what I want, and I'm going to make it happen no matter the cost. So imagine that arrogancy, John, that you and I and many people out there once believed, and sadly people that are still under the delusion that believe the law of attraction is scientific, or, you know, they believe, you know, that they don't believe in God, or, you know, they don't believe in Jesus Christ, you know, so they're, they're bondage to the sin and their bondage completely uh, to, to, you know, their delusion or, you know, their belief system, uh, you know, and it's sad that, you know, myself, I would assume you at one time, since we believe this to be true, this was the objective truth that we could manifest our own destiny. And it goes completely against god's creation as far as the laws of the universe and of themselves okay the true you know and we might not completely understand god's creation completely i'm not saying we we do at all even from a scientific standpoint yeah but it goes against that it goes against god's will and god does everything he possibly can to warn us through his word but as arrogant as we are to think okay god we don't need you we can do it ourselves and we can get ours it's just the arrogancy of that, man. Now being a born again Christian and looking back on it, I was like, I'm surprised God didn't strike me dead right then and there. I know. We're so blind to our own arrogance. It's ridiculous. And and we shake our fist at God, like uh, blaming him for our troubles. You know, uh, it, it it is like, imagine being God looking down at us thinking like, here we are like thinking that we can manipulate the the universe with our thoughts and the, he's just looking at us like you, you don't even know the you don't even know the the beginning of yeah of, of how this stuff works my guy <laughs> yeah I, and hopefully what i said made sense and i didn't ramble off too much but me looking back now and i'm sure you're the same way like you said and just what was i thinking the yeah. thinking that you know like that that a 300 page book by, you know, uh, Rhonda Byrne, you know, the secret, <laughs> roughly 300 pages, right? That's going to contain the secrets. Like she has figured out the <laughs> secrets of the universe. Okay. And, and, just then 300 think, pages. and then to think that the law of attraction is a scientific law that works a hundred percent of the time, knowing that it doesn't knowing that you can't, ma you can't manifest every little thing your heart desires and the heart is wicked above all because it, it, it goes against God's or, you know, laws and order for creation and against his will. Yeah. 
you know what something you said earlier too about like little g gods right that's that's essentially like i don't want to say it's a subgenre but it's kind of like a subculture like of the little g like the god doctrine right so these people it, like one of the names of uh the law of attraction is called uh, the science of deliberate creation you know and that that sparked in my mind instantly that these people think that they can lit- literally manifest whatever they want whenever they want like god you know yep. Like they are their own gods. Well, that's because they, they essentially, when you, when you peel it back, the reason that they think they are, uh, that they think they can create this stuff is because they do believe that we are our own gods. So yeah, there's, there's new thought and then there's new age, right? So Mm -hmm. new thought philosophy is panentheistic, right? Um, it, It means that the universe is essentially a manifestation or an extension of the divine mind, the, uh, yes. you know, and then you have, um, you have the new age view, which is pantheism, which is everything is God. It, we're not an extension of, of God. Like just the universe is God. Right. So both of those, uh, even though they, they're a little bit different in how mm-hmm. they would describe the universe's relationship with God, they, they still believe that even in the panentheistic worldview that, you know, the universe being an extension of God, us being an extension of God, we are God. We have a divine yeah. spark in all of us and, and we are all essentially God. And then the pantheist is just like straight up. Yes, you are God. You know, there's uh, there's there. You are one with the universe. The universe is God. The universe is infinite, which it's not. Um, you know, this this is when you peel it back, it goes to Luciferianism and uh, the Theosophical Society. And the, these are all worldviews that they actually believe. So sure. it's um, it's a mess. And what I've also noticed is that they're, they're very slick with it, right? These new age teachers and, and, and law of attraction gurus. When they're discussing their worldview with a Christian, I've noticed that they lean more new thought. Like they'll, they'll use new thought terms. And they use Christianese. Barbara Marks yes. Hubbard would do it all the time. And they would like, and they twist, they twist scripture. They use eisegesis instead of exegesis. And they'll say they'll, the, the famous uh, scripture through all, you know, through God and through Jesus Christ, I can do all things. Right. And there's yeah. the kingdom of God's within you is another one too. So yeah. they'll, you know, or you can do greater things than I. Okay. Yeah. And so they twist all those scriptures um, you know, using Christianese to, to talk to Christians. They'll, and so they give it that, that new age spent and new thoughts spent to get them, to get them on the hook. And then yep. once they're on the hook, then, and Alice Bailey wrote about, this is how the externalization of the hierarchy, which she says it's going to occur around 2025. I believe she channeled it from demons. They infiltrated the Christian church. The theosophists did to interject, to it, when I interject, we'll interject, yes, but to inject theosophical line of thinking into yep. christianity exactly yeah. well that's how you have um like christian science and uh you know fin- fin- this even uh trickles into um like word Southern of faith this convention yep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have a presbyterian with norman vincent peel right he wrote the power yep. the book the power of positive thinking he was trump's minister and he was a 33rd degree mason yeah I, I listened to that book a lot when i was uh um, you know, mixing the two, I'm like, wow, this makes sense. The power of positive thinking and, and stuff. And look, just to be clear, I do believe that there is practical reasons to think more positively than to think negatively. Of course, like we it's just, trust God. We shouldn't, we yeah. shouldn't rally our own, so- wallow in our own sorrows. Woe is me and self pity and everything like that. Like we should yeah. be it's, like, God's got this and he got us so we can go through any trial and tribulation. Yeah. And it's just when, when I start talking about the law of attraction, people think that what I mean is you shouldn't think positively. And I'm like, no, that is, that is not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that this stuff they're telling you is complete nonsense. That's, that's all I'm saying. You should still think positively, but just don't think that you're bending the universe to your will by doing so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's that balance there because like, you know, like real science will tell you that the the more you think negative and, and like you go into a depression state, all this stuff, it, it like releases uh, like poisonous toxins into your body. You yeah, know what definitely. I mean? And so there there's a legitimate side 
to you know your thoughts and how you should think positively but when you jump into oh i'm going to manifest money and become you know a millionaire through the power of thinking in my intellect like that that's just crazy bro like if if that was legit then anybody could do it at any point like yeah well that's that's what they sell you they sell you that anybody can do it at any point but uh, you know, they have the key to how anybody can do it. And the only way that you could do it is by paying them. John, let me ask you uh, a yes. question. When you were involved in this, this is what my experience was. It was like everything was about something material I could get. Yes, right. Of course, yes. that it, so was that your experience as well? Like, oh, the money that you can get from this or, uh, you know, the money or the fame or um, solving life's problems that you're dealing with currently at that time. It was all about what I could get out of it, not what other people could get out of it. And they have through one, I guess one thing, one offside, they have through the QAnon operation, which is spiritual warfare and psychological warfare too, uh, through, you know, through the new age, they, they yoked Christians into kind of like the Nassar Gassar scam where they can get all these Zimbabwe dollars and, one day they'll be able to get all the little the money for little heart desires to for have they'll be able to exchange this money at a bank. Uh, you know, once Trump was in power or once Trump gets back into power, this will happen. And what they do is they literally make them write up these intention binders of what they would do and all the good works that they would do with this money to improve humanity. Okay. And it's strictly it's strictly new age, new thought type, you know, the secret law of attraction type belief, right? Because, you know, you're going to get this money and then they literally call it an attention binder because it's your intention, right? And they're like, okay, now with, with you getting this money, you know, what are, with this great wealth transfer and you hear that in the yeah. you know, apostolic reformation yep. and, 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 and um, you hear that through, um, uh, you know, faith. kind of word of faith movement. It's the same thing. They're telling you the same thing. Okay. There's going to be this great wealth transfer. Okay. And so that's what they believe is, is they believe that they're going to be able to, they change the world. They'll take They don't take a literal interpretation of, of the, uh, the book of revelation or the scriptures or a premillennialist belief, belief. And I'll talk pre pre-tribulation rapture talking about a premillennialist a thousand year little kingdom belief. Yeah, yeah. They're like, we can make Jesus come back. We're, you know, it, it ties yep. in with post-millennialism and all millennialism. We will make the earth perfect so Jesus could returns. We're gonna hand it over to him. Mm-hmm. I heard and Kenneth I'm Copeland like, say something like that. Like, yeah. sorry to sorry to cut you off. John, no, you're but, fine. Uh, I forget who he was talking to, but um, it was either Kenneth Copeland or it was uh, Jesse Duplantis. It was one one or the other. Um, and they were like, you know, I believe that the reason Jesus hasn't come back yet is because people haven't given enough money. Because how? Yeah. Like, and and I I hear I hear it, and you know my uh holy spirit spidey senses start going off like crazy right yeah and, yeah but but you have people that literally try to break down what he's saying and say no you're not understanding he's saying that we need to donate money because when we donate money it goes to missions and people spreading the gospel and until the full number of the gentiles uh is reached then you know jesus isn't coming back so sending your money helps it and i'm like oh my gosh they got you yeah like they yeah. got you I mean, the Jews believe the same thing as far as their eschatology is concerned, that the world will get better until the, you know, the, 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 the temple is rebuilt again, the third temple, and then the Messiah will reign. OK, so they believe that they are making the world better through Tikkun Olam. And so it, it all it all comes together with that. And it's sad that there are Christians who are deceived, which I believe is the common tribulation time, which, you know, was for, you know, foretold in the Bible as far as the grand delusion, the great falling away, the great apostasy. And yeah. God is separating the wheat from the tares right now. Who's truly born again? and Who's not? If we are living in the end times, uh, as far as the tribulation period is going to start, which I think it may probably likely the next 10 or 20 years, but we'll see. But if that's the case, then they're literally preparing these, you know, Christians and and non-Christians to accept all of this law of attraction, new age nonsense. And they're not looking to Jesus to return, you know, to defeat the Antichrist, to defeat Satan. You know, Jesus treads the wine press, okay? We're supposed to be, uh, you know, martyrs for the faith, you know, as saints, you know, we're supposed to die preaching the gospel, uh, you know, the church is what the church goes through, but they've led them to believe, no, that's not what you do. Instead, you get the earth ready. 
Yeah, it's like and it's, it's like it's, it's like a form of dominionism. It, yes. it is dominionism at, at its greatest, and like the Christian nationalists and the you know and um, the reawaken America, the, which we've been talking about a lot, John is they're literally trying to infiltrate every sector of society or every quote unquote sphere of society, right. Yep. To, to Christianize it so that Christ can return because they, they believe that we're ushering in the kingdom of God. We are in that time period where, you know, uh, like that thousand years already right that now, God's not in control. We and do God, it. Yeah. That we do it. And it's just yeah, like, it's so delusional. What's interesting to me is like, I uh, I always look at the the whole infiltrating the the system as I look at it as we should be infiltrating the system just because we want Christians to be able to live in a society where we're able to practice our Christian values mm-hmm. and you know able to um to to live uh, God godly lives without you know threat of you know you know how it is in like some Muslim countries. Right? right. So, but to think that in doing so you're, you're preparing the world for Christ to come back. It's, it's difficult for me to agree with. And they also say it's the most important thing. The great commission is not the most important thing. And if anybody believes the great commission is the most important thing, as far as what, what, what the most important thing should I say that we're called to do that Christ directly commanded us to do, they call us weak or effeminate or timid. You're a scared Christian, you know? And, you know, I, I mean, uh, so, so there were the first century Christians that put their life on the line for the faith. Were they right. timid? Because they what didn't about- overthrow Rome. No, they, they didn't they even were try. martyred. No, Dude, like, they were if- if you were even a, a, a back in the you know first three centuries of Christianity, dude, like if you were a a part of the the government at all, right, they would be hesitant to baptize you. If you will, mm. you could they, they'd say, okay, fine, you can be a soldier, but you can't wield a sword. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna baptize you if you're wielding a sword because therefore you could use it to defend yourself and kill somebody, or you know be commanded to do so. And what are you gonna choose at that point while you're wielding that sword? You know what I mean? So they they really hesitated to baptize uh, people who proclaimed the name of Jesus Christ if you were a part at all in any form a part of the government at that time. So let's. And, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. I was just going to say real quickly, like they really truly de- believed in the dividing of the two kingdoms. You know, that's so, what it came down to. Yeah, definitely. And so when when I you know to bring it back to the subject at, at hand. When I look at new age spirituality and I look at the new world order and the one world religion and and all of this, since new age spirituality is something that is essentially a mishmash of anything, you're allowed to pretty much believe in anything that you want as a new ager, as long as it's not the true biblical Jesus. As long as it's not Bible, yeah. Bible believe in Christianity. Yeah. As long the, as it's not that, it's fine. You can have Jesus, but just not the the, not Jesus. the Jesus of the Bible. Yeah, yeah. You can have you can have your own Jesus, right? And you can you can be, you can believe in uh, uh, Muhammad uh, and uh, read the Quran, even though the Quran is against many things that we see today. That you would think, you know, it's it's you'll see kind of like you've probably seen the sign, John, of the LGBTQT, you know, like supporting sign being against Islamophobia. But then again. Yeah you know, the Quran is, is against homosexuality. Yeah, so it's, it's like, and it's something's not, not adding up here, you know, it's, it's not against it in the way that Christians are against it either. Well, like that's it's, true. It's yes. A, you know, it's a, it's against it in like a throw you off a roof type way, you know, mm-hmm. we're against it as, Hey, you're living in sin, put your faith in Christ, you know, yep. come be a Christian, let the Holy spirit work on Amen. that whole situation. You know, that's like, that's, that's how we look at it. We're like, Hey, you guys are just, you're, but we're you're, worse. You're living. We're worse yeah, to them though. Exactly. Like we we just tell you, hey, you know, that's not God, that's not God's design for love and marriage. Uh, you know, we want we want you to to put your faith in Christ and and let's work on this together, right? We'll right. work on it. Me, you, the Holy Spirit, we can work on this together. Love you. And and uh, you know, in Islam, it's like ah, uh, throw them off a roof. You know, <laughs> but but we're the bad guys. It's so crazy. Now, for either one of you, um, I, I kind of want to go down the rabbit hole to the more uh, like specific ties to Satanism or Luciferianism. Um, yes. Do you guys through your research? Oh, well, you wrote a book on it, John. Um, did you like in your research come across any ties to the Kabbalah? And I'm so- what they teach in there? 
not specifically like a, a, a teacher. So in, in my book, I, I did a very brief about everything because I wanted it to be digestible. Right. Yeah. I, I even tried to write the quantum physics chapter at like a seventh grade reading level. You could imagine how badly I wanted a drink to do that. Right. Like it was, it was difficult, but um, the, uh, the it's all the same stuff, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you, what you got to understand. So specific teachers, no, but, but doctrines, yes, you'll find similarities. Right. Um, so as far as it being tied to Satanism, you go down the rabbit hole. First person to say law of attraction was this guy named Andrew Davis Jackson or Andrew Jackson Davis. I always flip it. And it's not the guy on the $20 bill. He was just an, an American spiritist. And even when he used the words law of attraction, he didn't kind of use it in the same way uh, uh, that we would think of it today. Right. Yeah. But he was just the first person to say it. Right. But then it was expounded upon in uh through the work of helena blavatsky and yep. the theosophical society right so she may not have specifically said law of attraction but the what she taught was the the essential foundation of law of attraction doctrine that we find in the secret and that we find in you know her work isis unveiled and and all of that stuff right and then she was you, a racist oh she yeah was she was super racist she was an ardent racist and she i mean she was a theosophist but that's just a form of satanism yeah, yeah, it, straight up. That, it's one hundred percent. I was just about to get into that. If you listen to some of the quotes that Helena Blavatsky has about Satan, it would blow your mind yep. to think that this is a woman you should be following. She also said that she uh, would wish Christianity be wiped away from the face of the earth. Yep, you know. But then you go from her to people like uh, Aleister Crowley, right? Uh, it's I quoted this in my book, but it says. Aleister Crowley has done more for the mystic arts than, you know, Picasso has done for art, right? Like that's, these are correlations that people draw. And that's a, that's a uh, paraphrase of the quote, but, you know, Aleister Crowley has in his, in his book, magic, he has sections of it for, uh, about blood sacrifice and, and what's the best time to kill somebody. And, and the best time to kill somebody is while you're, I don't want to ruin the algorithms, but while you're doing your thing to them and yes. at the moment of orgasm is when you should kill them, right? So this is, this is, these are the people that are influencing the new age worldview. And then new agers are taking this stuff as like, it is the most positive, beautiful thing, right? Then you have, if it, you don't got to believe me and John on this stuff either. You just look at what Anton LaVey says. He has a, a, a whole paragraph uh, from, from a speech that he gave talking about the similarities between New Age spirituality and Satanism and yeah. how everything in New Age spirituality is just wanting to play the devil's game without using his infernal name. That is yeah. a, a direct quote from Anton LaVey. The dude That's wrote deep. this. He wrote the satanic Bible. So, you know, this isn't just us Christians saying, hey, that's demonic. You know, that's evil. That's from Satan. You know, that's that's not it's not just us being. They say it. Yeah. They're the ones that say it. the actual Satanists, the actual Luciferians, the, the people who are at the foundation of your worldview are saying this. It's not us. We're just telling you that they're saying it. And they make Lucifer or Satan to be the liberator. Oh, yeah. The inverse, the Garden of Eden story, which the Gnostics did as well. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, you have Alice Bailey uh, yeah, writing about Lucifer in a positive light. You have Blavatsky yeah. writing about Lucifer in a positive light. You have Pike writing about Lucifer in a positive light. And when I was a New Ager, because New Ager, New Ageism is subjective. It's not mm -hmm. the objective truth uh, of Lord of of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and God the Father and the Holy Spirit in the Bible, it, you know, which is a which is objective truth of the entire universe. It's subjective in that. Okay, so I was like, well, Alice Bailey and Blavatsky and Pike and yeah, I know Pike's a high up Scottish Rite Freemason, but they kind of just got this stuff wrong. And what I believe is right, yeah, you know, and you're you can do that because in New Age you can you can believe whatever you want to and you can rationalize whatever it resonates you want with to, whatever resonates with you, John. Whatever as resonates as long with you. as it's not Bible believing Christianity. Yeah, yeah, 
That's the low frequency stuff, man. Low frequency. That Bible, that's that's low vibration. Book of Mormon's <laughs> fine. Yeah. Book of Mormon's okay. Uh, I mean, I, I it, looking back on it now, I can't believe I bought into it. And I yeah. bought into it through watching, you know, Zekgeist, through, mm. um, you know, f- again, you keep, Jeremy, I, we all do it. We, we use these new age terms that they have subjected us to, like f- go down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Granted, that's from Alice in Wonderland. The way it's used now moderately is Gnostic. Okay. Yeah. So when I, right. you know, learned that I was lied to, and Alex Jones was right, even though I was raised as a Christian and my father was a born again Christian and was a conspiracy theorist. Okay. I fell away because, you know, he died in my own arrogancy and my own hubris and, and falling into delusion. You know, that happens to a lot of people. Once they learn about um, alternative history and conspiracy theory, the new agers are, are, are waiting in open arms to, to, to just hug them and take them in. And that's exactly what happened to me. And that's because Alice Bailey, if you go read her, she was one of the OG conspiracy theorists. Yep. There's a conspiracy theory and new age spirituality go hand in hand uh, in a uh, in a lot of ways. They are super open to discussing conspiracy theories and aliens and, uh, uh, you know, government um, uh, like programs. MK do, you think they try to de- and- do you think they try to deconstruct reality? Very similar to the Matrix movies and that. Yeah, definitely. And especially in the, the newest psychological warfare operation, elitist externalization of hierarchy. Remember when conspiracy theorists used to try to get down to the bottom of the things, of, of the bottom of something, John and Jeremy? But now it's not that. It's nah. let's see we can find how it's fake and doesn't, didn't happen at all. Yeah. Yep. And and also you got to you got to think about what these what new age spirituality actually teaches. They they essentially teach that nothing is real. Yep anyway right so nothing matters yeah so nothing is real nothing matters even though they're very passionate about certain issues right um but so when when you come from that worldview of nothing is real i've been lied to my whole entire life i've you know fi- i've woken up to the conspiracy that is life yeah they've been telling me that this physical world exists and it actually doesn't everything is a lie. I can't believe anything these people tell me. So when you show up with your conspiracy theory, like, yo, what do you think about this? They are open arms. And they say, well, let me tell let me take you even further, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, yep. and, and that's what they'll do. Do you know about the Anunnaki? Do you know about the, like, they just, they go down these routes. Do you know about the Emerald tablets, the real Thoth. Emerald tablets of yep. Thoth, you know? And, and, as above, so below. Do you know this stuff? And they they take you down these these crazy trails, and then they get you into you know psychedelics and having yep. spiritual because it's all about experiences too. You know, none of this is real, but let me have an experience. Mm-hmm. Like what? It's you know? subjectivism. It's <laughs> it, not. It's not objectivism. Yep. Um, but John, let it, me ask you this real quick. Is anybody again? John, I want to ask one last question though. Yeah. Um, have you seen through your research? and I've seen it very similar to me and I know other people have talked about it is how they say a person who's on, who is not, is not um, awakened yet. They're a sheep. Is that a slur against Christians because Jesus is the good shepherd? I don't think we are a sheep. Cause I've heard them mockingly use that. And I've heard even, you know, you can find inferences of new agers like Barbara Marks Hubbard saying something very similar to that effect. I, and that, I haven't. Uh, okay, yeah, so I, have, I was just curious if you I'm came sorry. across that or not. I haven't. I haven't found that they necessarily use sleep, use sheep as like a term specifically for Christians. I have. I have seen it used even in political environments. No, for not people. not not for Christians, but people that are unawakened. They oh use yeah, that de- term. oh yes, definitely. But they're uh, using it in a mockingly standpoint towards Christians, as we are the sheep and Jesus is the good shepherd. So they're using it kind of mockingly. And I've heard New Agers actually discuss this. Is that I wasn't using aware it, of that. They're using us to mock us because technically we are the sheep. As that's very Christians, interesting. And Jesus is, is the good shepherd. That is very interesting. Uh, I never even that never registered in my mind, but I could see the correlation uh, to it, and I don't I don't doubt that it's pos- that it's a possibility that they're specifically using that as like a like a dig. 
Um, but I have noticed even in like when I, when I try to have conversations, logical conversations, there was a, a woman who was trying to get me to, to believe more new thought. Like, you know, this was way after I, I came out of the new age and everything. And she was trying to get me to read like the gospel of Thomas. And I'm like, look, I, I read the gospel of Thomas and this is why it's, you know, this is why it's wrong. And there's just, they have no answer except, oh, you're, you're at a low consciousness yep. level. You know, they, these, these attacks as like, oh, you, you just don't understand because you're, you haven't ascended enough. You're, you're not awake enough. You don't understand because you're at a low vibration. You're at a low consciousness level. And I'm like, that you're is not so, ready. that's so intellectually lazy. But have you heard them the way they talk about people like you and I, where at one time we did understand the mysteries to some degree and we left and became born again Christians. Have you heard what they say about us? No, I, I have not. Um, because usually I run circles around people. Um, mm -hmm. so it's, uh, like there's all my friends who are in the new age. I, I have this like thing where they don't want to talk to me about it. Right. Of course. Not. Um, they like, they just don't want to talk to me about it. They'll talk to my wife about it, but they won't talk to me about it. You know, like they just, they're too afraid to get down into this conversation with me and not to sound arrogant, but it's because I know their tactics and I know their stuff and I know their nonsense. I know the logical fallacies. I know the science behind it. Like I know that you don't know the science behind it, Mr. New Ager. You just think that you do. I, I know the history of your spirituality. I like, I, I have a lot of answers to these questions and they just, they don't engage with me. And I'm sure that if somebody hears me talking like this, maybe somebody on the internet would like to engage with me on it. But for the most part, it's, they want to just talk to people who they can trick into believing what yeah. they believe. Yeah. Which average now, new ager doesn't feel this way, but the elite new agers, the way they talk about it is since we were once partakers of the forbidden fruit of knowledge, according to them. Okay. And that we, now we turned our back on that. And now push people away from it. We are, you know, just we're lumped in, but even worse, they're going to persecute us first, as Barbara Marx Hubbard would say, actually, when they call one fourth of humanity, because Barbara Marx Hubbard said that she, that she is the pale horse in Revelation, and that, she, that the elite have allowed her to call one fourth of humanity with the elite. Okay, this is what they're going to do. The people that choose not to ascend, which is code word for the Christians. Okay. And that, you know, the rest of the world doesn't have to feel guilty about that because their blood's not on, our blood's not on their hands. It's the elite, okay? That we are the ones that they are going to kill first because we're the turncoats. It, it bugs me out how people think that death, it would be a deterrent for an actual Christian. Yeah. Right. Like, do you know what we believe what happens when we die? Like, do you, yeah. have right. you not... You know, you guys might fear death. I don't fear death. I, I don't fear, fear like, death. I fear like how I'm going to die. I, I yeah. you know, that's what I think. Like I'll be, I, I like to go swimming a lot. I'm like, yo, what if, what if I'm taken out by a shark? I saw like a little <laughs> barracuda. I saw yeah. a little barracuda today and I'm like, dang, I left my knife on the, on the beach. You know, like I, <laughs> I, I think about like, I'm more scared of how, how you uh, go, out. how I go, you know, but as far as going, I'm like, do you know where I'm going? Like right. the promise of where I'm going, it's it's epic. You want to? Oh yeah, we'll get rid of them. You're not getting rid of us. You are actually helping us out. You know, um, but that's very interesting. That uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna ask you, John, if you could send me some of that uh, that information and and some links and stuff on that, so I can go for lack of a better term, go down that rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I'll I'll um. I'll give you a free link to my sub stack and you can read my article on Barbara Mooks Harvard and I can send you information on that. But awesome. um, I know, Jeremy, I know you want to get in. I, I Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I have one last question <laughs> oh, again about the Institute of Noetic Sciences and Dan Brown's work, but go ahead, uh, uh, Jeremy. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Well, no, no, you're good, man. Don't ever apologize, bro. Uh, we all got a lot to say, but um, this might tie into something that you might br bring up with your uh, uh, with what you're about to say, but um, just to touch back on the the, the new age, new agers and the conspiracy theories and how they're, you know, it's not that the conspiracy theories are bad in general or that like looking into conspiracy theories is strictly new age, but like they don't have uh, a certain lens to actually process some of these 
um, uh, conspiracy th theories through, right? So when we look at conspiracy th theories, we can connect it all back to the Bible. I mean, I mean, the ones that are legit, obviously you can see which ones aren't like, I, I'm sorry, I don't believe in lizard people, but you know, like uh, we have a filter and they don't, so they don't have any hope either. They're just chasing all the time. They're just chasing one conspiracy to the next, to the next, to the next. Yep. And really what it comes down to if from what I've seen a witness is that it comes back down to the doctrine that they believe that they themselves are as gods. They have nothing to believe. You know, they, they can't believe anything is true, but they believe that they themselves are as gods and that they must have some sort of control over their own reality when they finally realize, oh, I am God or I am a God. Does that make sense? Yeah. And yeah. but but like when you're when you're looking at some of these things, you know, whether it's New World Order or the Anunnaki or whatever, from a biblical lens, like we can trace the Anunnaki back to the fallen angels. They don't. They see them as like aliens. Yep. You know, and then it leads into all this other deception because they don't have the right filter. Yeah. But for, and for, go on. And no, and also just like when it comes to aliens, right? Most people think that aliens are these physical entities, right? Like right. they think that they're from like a distant planet, you know, guardians of the galaxy type stuff, right? And they just fly over here. They give us some information. I forget who said it, but it's like, yo, you traveled all the way across the galaxy just to tell me that Jesus isn't God. Like, you know, you that's, that's what you came all the way over here for. Like, why are you not <laughs> yeah. telling me something? How come you didn't tell me how to cure cancer yet, buddy? Um, but so when when people believe that these are physical beings that's a that shows you right there that they they don't understand how one how physics actually works and and two they don't understand interdimensional you know and how and even if they do believe in interdimensional they don't understand that once you leave this dimension you are now in the spiritual realm outside of space time and matter so something that is interdimensional is actually what us Christians would call spiritual. You know, these are spiritual heavenly beings, you could you, you could say, right? Uh, they, they don't operate. Well, they can come into the, the 3D, but they don't operate in this field in the same, the same way that we do, right? Um, so when, when I think about people who believe in aliens that are, you know, physically coming from the other side of the galaxy, yeah. Once you go over the speed of light, like you, you pretty much disintegrate, you know, so if the speed of light is constant throughout the universe, you know, you would pretty much disintegrate. So you, you can't even come from the other side of the galaxy and any, anything slow, anything quicker than the speed of light. Otherwise you're like passing through time. You guys ever saw interstellar? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been like, a while, but yes. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, I, I always tell people it's kind of like that when, when, you know, you're passing on to other dimensions and stuff. And then it gets into like quantum entanglement and, and all these different quantum theories. But, uh, you know, when, I don't know how I got down this rabbit hole, but just whenever people are talking about Anunnaki and, and all this stuff as physical beings, it's like, no, you're missing the point. You're right. completely missing the point. Yeah. They're only manifest. I mean, they, they can, they can manifest as a physical being, but they're, 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 uh what, what would i say um their nature is spiritual yeah you know but they can manifest physically like in genesis 6 you know that the angels came down and made it with the women of mankind right and the the angels uh in sodom and gomorrah were able to eat you know and people people yep. saw them as physical beings but their nature is 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 spiritual they were just manifested physical and that can get into a whole bunch of different stuff you know whether it's like um you know cryptids or um ghosts and stuff like that you know that kind of leans into a whole bunch of different stuff but um i don't know where you want to bring this now but john i the other john i know that you had a question or you were going to bring up something yeah that... I, I do real quick for john um yeah uh, it's a two-part question um one have you ever heard of the institute uh, institute of noetic sciences i i've heard of it but i have not went down uh into a research um okay I think into very... researching it I think it's very crucial that you do um, with what you're trying to expose uh, and what you're researching, okay? Because it's the one of the largest um, new age pseudoscientific um, 
uh, uh, groups. It was formed by former a- astronaut Edgar Mitchell and uh, Paul Nathaniel Temple, who was part of the Family and the Fellowship uh, Foundation. And it was yoked uh, with um, evangelical Christians um, together. Uh, it, um, it's very interesting how evangelical Christians and, and modern Christianity in general yoked with the new age. It's a whole nother discussion. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I just was curious if you ever heard about it because it still exists today. It's still very large. It's still driving a lot of things. And in Dan Brown's book, um, which Dan Brown was someone who I admired a lot when I was a Gnostic, but of course cannot stand the man now, obviously. Yeah. yeah. But um, and the, uh, did you, did you ever read or uh, lost symbol or watch the television show lost symbol by chance? Does that ring a bell to you? No. Okay, so in that book, the two heroes in that book was Institute of Oic Sciences and and Freemasonry. They were who saved America in that novel, okay? And so I think the Institute of Oic Sciences is something you should definitely research because they're very much into new thought and the Global Consciousness Project and psychic genes or testing 23andMe to find if people have psychic genes. They're very much into that, but they're covering it with a quote unquote scientific veneer. Okay. Where they're, they're, but it's pseudoscience, obviously. Okay. And yes, I had, do have issues with science and above itself. Not that I, I, I do believe, I, I, I mean, I teach, you know, science from a biblical perspective as a creationist at, at the church that I go to at the, at the school. Um, but there is issues with science. TM or trademark or whatever you want to call it to as well. You know, science is not perfect yeah. um, either. But, you know, even your basic science is still mostly leagues better than the pseud- pseudoscience, which is new age <laughs> yeah. thinking and belief. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, you know, but because um, I mean, there is some truth to <sighs> quantum theory and quantum mechanics in the way like modern computers work and processing yeah. power okay that stuff but is it's not different like, than new age quantum mechanics so. yes there's so that's yeah i have a i have a um chapter in my book called the wu-tang clan right and it's it's about the woo-woo science stuff and you know when it comes to quantum theory right quantum theory is they this i'm gonna try to just break this down as simply as possible right there's a difference between uh causation and interpretation, right? So you can look at some data and interpret it. Even the even if you can measure what's going to happen, when it comes to quantum theory, there are so many different theories on mm-hmm. why did this just happen, right? So one thing that the New Agers always uh, go to is like the double slit experiment, right? Yep. yep. And, and the observer effect, right? Yep. right? So the the whole thing is, all right, we see that something acts differently when we see that these particles act differently when a observer is present, right? And that observer doesn't even have to be human observer, but an observer is present. So one, uh, this whole, like, if, if you think that that means that reality doesn't exist unless you are looking at at reality or you are focusing on it, yeah. you're causing it to exist by by observing it. Well, one, that that creates an infinite regress of observers that would have to exist for anything to exist, right? But also that the fact that this happens doesn't equate to hey you're creating your reality with your thoughts yep like that is a huge ridiculous leap to be making to say that just because when a when an observer is present these particles act differently to say that that then equals your thoughts create this whole entire universe that's a huge jump is a dog right? able to do it as the yeah. observer and the, and then what you have to understand is for every like one quantum physicists that would maybe adhere to this one they most of them actually i think all of them i think it's safe to say all of them who believe in this type of theory of the observer effect and think that we are creating our reality with our thoughts and with our observation they don't work or teach at any credible university right right it's like pseudoscience yeah and then also for every one of them you have 3000 other quantum physicists that are like, yeah, man, that's wrong. You know, so they're in the extreme, not just the minority, but in the extreme, extreme 
minority of all quantum physicists that believe that the double slit experiment means that we create our reality with our thoughts. Yeah, it, it's, it's <clears throat> silly. Um, and there is some, I, I, de I definitely recommend if you have it, maybe you have, um, look into some of the uh, sword histories of people that were quantum uh, theorists uh, from its inception. A lot had to tie in with the Manhattan Project, obviously, too, as well. But a lot of people don't realize, like Edwin Schrodinger, for example, uh, he was pedophile. He, he courted Irish girls. Wow. Um, like underage girls. Okay. Now, granted, that doesn't separate his you know, as far as like, you know, Schrodinger's cat as thought experiments with quantum mechanics. Yeah. And he later actually kind of pushed back against the pseudoscientific aspects of quantum mechanics. But it's still interesting that when you start researching, I did it, I can't, I had it written down. There are, they have like, there's dubious passes of them working with Heisenberg, I think, worked with Nazis, if I remember correct. I'd have to go back and look. But like the, the early quantum mechanics and early quantum physicists, a lot of them didn't have like the best, like a lot of them actually had occultish backgrounds yeah. too as well, too. Yep. Right. And so um, it's just interesting. It was something I was going to do. Um, I have a series called Mo Modern Science is, is is very much tied in with New Age and Kabbalistic thought, okay, of what young uh, Paul told young Pastor Timothy, science so falsely called in the King James Version, but in the other versions, knowledge, okay, but it is applicable to science so falsely, falsely called today, which is pseudoscience. Yeah. Now, uh, John, I know that you only... I think we only got about 10 minutes left. I want to uh, I want to give you an opportunity to be able to shout out your book um, yes. where people can get it. You know, anything that you want to say about it to promote. It's all you. Um, yeah, I mean. Um, hold on. Sorry. So this is the book. Right here. It's called uh, Law of Attraction, a gateway drug to spiritual heroin. The reason why I call it a gateway drug to spiritual heroin is because the law of attraction opens the door to new age spirituality, right? And new age spirituality is kind of just chasing high after high, after high, after high as a spiritual experience. You're just chasing that over and over and over again. And you're, you're essentially searching for a breakthrough and enlightenment, right? And in the book, I not only break down all of the pseudoscientific claims and all the nonsense of the, and the history and everything, but I also expose a lot of the dark side of the industry, uh, the new age self-help spiritual warrior retreat industry. Now, the reason why uh, one of the catalysts for this book was um, there's a woman named Kathy Goodman in The Secret, right? And she was the person who was um, said that she healed herself of breast cancer, right? And this was, you know, for me, when I first watched it, this was something that, uh, that got me excited because I have stomach issues. So I thought that I would be able to heal my stomach issues through the, the power of my thought and the power of intention me using, too. The, me yeah, too. using the law of attraction. But I later found out that she died of breast cancer. So here you have Yikes. in the secret, yeah, you have in the secret, this woman saying that she healed herself of breast cancer. Then she dies of breast cancer. And nobody bats an eye. Like she's just still in the secret, still in the book, still in the movie. Nobody even cares, right? right. Then you have uh, James Arthur Ray, who uh, was a contributor of The Secret. He had three people die at one of his spiritual warrior retreats. He did two years for negligent homicide because he made a makeshift um, sweat lodge that people went into and then died in the sweat lodge, right? And and so when people are like, ah, oh, why don't you just let people believe what they believe? One, uh, if you believe this stuff and it leads you away from Christ, that is eternal damnation, right? But two, just practically in, in your life, period, this stuff is no good for you. And and 
if it could just save somebody from believing they can heal themselves with their mind and don't need to seek out any professional medical treatment, or it can save them from their own personal sweat lodge experience, then like, why not? I also wrote the book because I just, I kind of got tired of answering people's questions about the law of attraction. Like why you don't yeah. believe it anymore. I'm just like, well, here's the book, read it. This is, this is why. And this isn't even all the reasons why I don't believe it. I, I just, I tried to condense it all. There's stuff that I, I didn't even go into the psychological uh, damage that it can do and, and how there's therapists who say that this is uh, bad for you in the long run because of toxic positivity. It you works know. all the time, John works all the time. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred, hundred percent. 100%. Can I say something real quick? Is it because yeah, it reminded me of uh, one of the teachings within the, um, you know, the prosperity gospel, new NAR, and also especially the word of faith, where um, they're, they're teaching you that, you know, just proclaim that you are when you pray, proclaim, like, say you have an ailment, proclaim that you are healed and believe it. Yep. Believe it. And if, if, if you don't get better, or you're not healed instantly, it's your fault. You didn't have enough faith. It's like, that is such a big problem. So toxic. So toxic. Very toxic. I think Andrew Womack teaches teaches that as well. And I, I'm sitting there like, dude, if this guy's leg's broken and he's prayed or you guys prayed over his leg and he believes that it's healed, healed but he, you know, and then the next moment he tries to get up and walk and it, he, his leg is still broken. Right? And then they blame it on him. Yeah, it's always a uh, lack of faith. It's like, but Paul. The apostles still had issues. Yep. I, I mean, you know, he told Timothy to drink a little liquor for his stomach problems. Yep. And of course, it was diluted in water, obviously. But yes, I mean, I mean, think about it. Paul got hit in the head with a rock, right? He got almost stoned to death, right? And his vision's going dim, you know, as he's writing his later la later letters. Did he not have strong enough faith? Did he not decree and declare enough? Yeah. yeah. I, and the thorn in his, his, his side, you know what I mean? The, the thorn in his flesh never left. God literally told him my grace is sufficient enough for you. Yep. And he sucked it up. I have a, a chapter called faith fentanyl in the book. And uh, it's nice. about, it's about how the law of attraction has bled into the church with uh, you know, the, the, um, the word of faith and, and all of that stuff. They believe that you are activating the faith force. Like faith is, is a force that you can activate, right? And mm. when you are speaking good things, you're attracting God's blessings into your life by activating the faith, the faith force. And these blessings are obviously, you know, money and wealth and all that stuff, right? You know, what's interesting to me about these like healing things, and I do believe that God heals today. Of course, don't, don't, of course. I agree don't, too. Yeah, don't yep. get it twisted that uh, like I don't believe that God can perform a miracle today. Like, come on. It's a miracle I get up every morning. So, amen. But it, if you notice, it's always like somebody's back problem or somebody's shoulder or somebody short you leg. Know, yeah, short leg, or they get out of their wheelchair and walk around it, or you know. And I'm sure that that there are some people who have you know been prayed for in a wheelchair and got healed, and they're still walking around. I'm I'm pretty sure, but it's never something like a miraculous healing when jesus was in the synagogue and the man's hand was withered he's he just made it well he made his hand perfectly fine yeah we don't see any of that we don't see somebody who is you know uh who got a bone sticking out of their leg praying in jesus name and the go and the bone goes right back in their leg we don't see that right it's always Amen. just like oh yeah my back hurt and now my back don't hurt what that, right. is a, that is a cheap God. Yep. Miracles were quite rare in the Bible, if you count them. And especially uh, when you put into perspective the time frame. Right. And of course, of course, he he heals, like you said. You know, we're, I just don't want anybody to, to to get that wrong. Like we believe miracles happen today. And I'm, I know John and I believe, you know, that the gifts are still for today. Mm -hmm. But like you know, you, you got these people out there who are making a show of what God is doing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and it's hard for some people to differentiate between what God is doing and what man is doing and corrupting, you know, and confusing people over, especially when it comes to healing stuff. You know, you got like Todd White over there faking people's legs uh, growing. You know what I mean? Like, dude, like clearly, clearly faking it in the name of Christ. And those things that, that like that really, really bothers me.
there's I don't want to get off topic, but there's, yeah, there's, it's money. It's a yeah, money, there's money in it, man. There's money. There's attention. There's so in the new age too, too, right? Before we close out, um, there's so many similarities between new age, new, new apolistic. I can't ever say that word. New apolistic reformation, uh, you know, word of faith. There's, there's so many correlations, right? Mm. One of, one of them is uh, I'm important right yeah like i am the all knowledgeable new ager who knows the secrets of the universe and i need you to come to me in order to you, you know they have these like little cult followings right and they they abuse these cult followings i know some people who used to sleep with people because they thought that they were healing them or at least yep. that's what they said right so you have that then you have people in the new apolistic reformation or these people who are super hyper focused on signs and wonders and it's like hey i'm the guy who's gonna cast this demon out of you or i'm the guy who's gonna heal your uh you know infirmity i'm the guy who's gonna break your generational i'm curses. doing it yeah. god's not doing it the I'm power of i am but you listen that but the, yes it's joel osteen right yep. so so here's the thing though they'll say this isn't me doing it. it's the holy spirit but they still need you to come to them. And they take all the credit. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But uh, yeah, we could go down a whole other rabbit hole uh, another day about that stuff because that aggravates me as well. Yeah, we'll have to have you back on again, man. Yes, I know you got a dip. So, so uh, can you just tell people uh, real quickly where they can get your book? Yeah, so right now I just got it exclusively on Amazon. Uh, but as far as hard copies, it's just easier for me that way. Um, I did everything myself. Uh, well, not myself. I hired, you know, people, but I didn't go through a publishing company. I self-published. So um, that helps. If you like the book, please leave me a review on Amazon. That really helps as well. And you can get the ebook pretty much anywhere. Um, there's even a woman who requested my book for her library and the library got the book. So now you can rent it at her library. So you got to do audible, bro. You got to do audible. I, so I'm going to be, um, I'm hoping to get it done while I'm uh, in Boston. I was going to do it um, while I was here, but it's so loud in Puerto Rico. Uh, I was going to ask my church to let me uh, record over there, but it's going to, it's going to take me a while. Cause you know, I gotta, I gotta make sure I don't mess up any words and stuff. So I'm going to, to Boston and New York for about a month. So I'm going to sporadically record it there because it is, it is way more quiet, way more quiet. I'm looking forward to that, man. I love Audible. So that, that you know, it's just more convenient sometimes when you're, especially when you're working, you know, you can just yeah. listen to the book the whole time, but man, I appreciate you coming on and, uh, you know, we'd love to have you on again, bro. Um, yes. you know, uh, John before uh, John Brisson, like, do you have any final words? Because I know that. Um, I wanna, end I'm very appreciative of all that you're doing for the body of Christ, John, uh, as a former new ager, this is what my, um, main focus of apologetics is to is reaching out to former New Agers and, and Gnostics, um, and uh, and um, I want to great you know I, I'm greatly appreciative uh, of of what you're doing because um, you know it, it, the heresies are returning from the first century like Judaizing and Gnosticism and they're becoming abound and um, you know it, it is good uh, for us to go out there and try to reach these people through love and rebuke them through love. And say we were once lost, and now because of Jesus Christ, we're found. Amen. And I, I appreciate you guys, and I'm really excited to to dig in on some of your research, John, because uh, you know that I'm feeling called as well to to you know stay in this realm for you know probably for life of reaching out to to New Agers and Gnostics and stuff. Because this, um, just before we close out, the majority of people are not atheists right the right. atheists atheists are loud and and they do a good job at at riling up uh christians and we we should be reaching them through apologetics and and through through that stuff right but most people are spiritual people like they they claim that they're spiritual or they're in some false religion or you know they believe in this false idea of god so and and, and new ageism is so culturally accepted that there are so many people who believe in it so i think there needs to be more people reaching the the new ager more people creating content for new agers there's so many people out there 
doing apologetics to like debunk atheism. And that's good. I'm glad that there's a lot of people out of there, but it's kind of like we're jumping them because it's only like, I think like 3% of people are, are atheists. So it's like, we got all this content and don't quote me on that, but that's just what I remember. Um, So we got all these people jumping on the atheists. We got all these, these new agers and, and spiritual people out here. They got nobody doing apologetics and reaching, reaching them. So the fact that, you know, you're, you guys are doing this is, is really good. Um, so thank there, you. There's a small a, group of honor us, brother, to be here. But there's a small group of us, but we're out there and, and, um, you know, and I appreciate of your work doing it too, as well, because yeah, God bless you, know, you, bro. There are a lot of people out there, like you said, if you look at the numbers that are spiritualist or they're agnostic, but they favor spiritualism, yep. uh, you know, and, and, um, it's far more than atheists in my opinion. Um, I am appreciative of the apologists like David Wood, who apologizes oh, to yeah. the Muslims, who is a very large sect, obviously. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I, there are there are a few of us out there and there have been a few of us out there in the past, too, as well, um, like Constance Cumby or or um, or uh, Tex Mars um, um, or um, Warren B. Smith. Um, oh, yeah. But, Warren B. Um, Smith. But, um, you know, there were few and far between. Uh, and I think that we are needed now more than you know maybe since the first century uh and um yeah i think god hopefully all glory to god will use us uh to defend the faith amen uh, just real quickly i know you got a dip man uh do you want to pray us out of here brother yes definitely awesome. thank you thank you father god just want to first say thank you for using tools like the internet to connect brothers and sisters in christ Uh, The internet is used for so much evil and so much wrong, but you continue to use these tools for your glory, and we are just appreciative of it. I I would never get to meet people um, like Jeremy and John. I I just wouldn't if it wasn't for the internet. So thank you for using this to connect us. Thank you for allowing them the the time that you have uh, given them to, to use their time to have these conversations and to help people grow in their faith and to reach the lost. Uh, We're praying, God, that you, above all, in this conversation, we're honored. We're praying that this conversation helps bring people to Christ, helps uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ grow in their faith. And we're praying, God, that you just use this to reach as many people as possible uh, as you see fit. So that way we can help them, God, and and that they can get in a right relationship with you because there is nothing more important than that. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You have a good night, brother. Stay in touch, man. Thank you so much.